Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will be doing a fragrance haul. Before we get started, if you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. And thank you so much for your continued support. It means the world to me. If you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and activate that notification bell. Without further ado, let's jump right into this haul. The fragrances I'm hauling today are mostly Middle Eastern fragrances, with the exception of one. The first fragrance I'll be talking about comes from the French fragrance house called Chukdra. I have never heard of them before. I stumbled across this one at Fragrance X and I read the notes. It sounded like something that I would really like. This is Pure Arabian Velvet and this is from their private blend line. It comes in this beautiful black bottle. It looks fancy and expensive. This was about 50 USD. In fact, all of these fragrances are under $100. They're all really affordable and their niche quality. And I believe that this is a niche fragrance house. I have not heard anybody here on YouTube talk about this. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments below. I blind bought this one and I just went by the notes. I don't even think I found this one on For Grantica. So this was indeed a risky blind buy. I will first go ahead and read the notes to you and then tell you what I'm getting from it. In the top notes, there's black pepper, heliotrope, and cloves. Middle notes are honey and orange blossom. Base is vanilla, tonka bean, and tobacco. I will not spray this on my skin because this is a very potent fragrance. This is a bold in your face type of scent. And the atomizer is so nice. This is so sweet and so yummy. There's a blast of honey that comes through. I'm not picking up the spices, certainly not picking up any black pepper. This is all honey and tobacco, loud and proud in your face. If you don't like tobacco, this might be great because the honey in here overpowers the tobacco. If you love honey in a fragrance, this is a honey bomb. Like I said, I am barely picking up the florals. I'm not smelling that orange blossom. I'm mostly getting the honey and the tobacco and vanilla. It's very sweet, very heady, very potent. This one is eternal. Like this lasts in my skin until I rub it off. This is like a friendlier, sweeter tobacco vanille, which has a more prominent tobacco note. This tobacco note is barely, barely there. And the honey is there from the beginning to the end. This one doesn't leave your skin. I have to go easy with this one. One spray on each pulse point, four sprays total, and that's it because it's a bomb it's nuclear my entire room is filled with this and i just sprayed this once if you like honey you don't have to love tobacco but if you love your honey fragrances this is a good one to get and the price is so reasonable i'm glad to have discovered this one and this wears beautifully in the cold it cuts right through the cold this is not one i'll be wearing this summer because this will choke me out i'm mean, gonna get a major headache this is not a hot weather type of scent this is more of a really cold weather, cold day type of fragrance. I love to wear this when I'm going out and it just cuts through the cold beautifully. Again, this is Pure Arabian Velvet by Chikudra Paris. These following fragrances are all from Middle Eastern fragrance houses. This one is from the house of Latafa and this is called Oud Mood. Look at the stunning packaging it comes in. It looks like some kind of a liqueur, like a cognac will come in something like this. This is just stunning. And again, this one is priced so reasonably. I don't even remember how much I paid for this, but it was under $100. It was less than your designer fragrances. The bottle is stunning. Look at that. It's just so unique and it looks expensive. This looks like it definitely costs over $100. This looks niche. I believe Latafa is considered a niche house. The top notes are rose, saffron, and pimento. The middle notes are oud, caramel, floral notes, and patchouli. Base notes are resin, amber, woody notes, incense, and musk. And this is your woody, sweet, ambery, balsamic rose. You have smelled Shagapud by Swiss Arabian. This is pretty much the same. The only slight difference is that Shaga food has more of a prominent rose in it than this one. 
This smells straight up gourmand because the rosin here is barely detectable. You get that caramel, that delicious sweetness, and then you get this beautiful smokiness in the dry down. It's very resinous, very ambery. This fragrance is sweet throughout the entire wear. This is a beginner friendly oud. It's not like a very prominent, dirty, barnyardy oud. If you have never tried oud or you just don't like a strong oud fragrance, this is a safe blind buy, especially if you don't have Shaga Food because I feel like the two are redundant. I do have my Shaga Food and I love that fragrance, but I feel like it's redundant to have this one. And I don't feel like getting rid of this one. I just love the bottle so much and I do love that sweetness. And maybe on days I'm not feeling like wearing a rose centric fragrance, I will reach for this one as opposed to Shaga Food, but I'm really, really enjoying this one. This is so, so good. And this is also a dupe to Maison Lancôme's Oud K, which Shaga Food is a dupe for as well. But again, this rose is barely there. You don't really pick it up. At least my nose doesn't pick it up as much as the other notes. I wouldn't even call this one a floral fragrance. To me, it's all about the resins, the woods, the vanilla, and the caramel. Mm. Such a good gourmand, absolutely yummy, delicious, mouth-watering Oud Mood by La Tafa. This next fragrance also comes from the house of La Tafa and this is called Ka'ed. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. This gold bottle is so nice. In the top, you get cinnamon, cardamom, and bergamot. In the mid, you get saffron, sandalwood, cedar, and carnation. In the base, you get vanilla, Oud, amber and leather. Look at this really fine mist. So in the opening, I am getting that cinnamon. I'm getting a pinch of saffron. The bergamot is there, but it's not a citrusy opening. It just gives it enough freshness. I'm not picking up the carnation. This does not smell floral to me, but it gives off a smokiness the way a carnation sometimes does. A very sensual smokiness. Not cigar, cigarette-like, but very sensual and opulent. It smells more expensive than it really is. I'm getting a sweet vanilla. It's warm. It smells very classy. This scent makes me feel very put together, like I'm about to go out, even if I'm staying in. It puts me in a going out state of mind. This one is not one of those polarizing, heavy-hitting type of scents. It is potent and this does have great performance, but it doesn't have any harsh edges. It's a really nice blend of all of these notes. I'm not picking up the oud in here particularly. It's a very beginner friendly oud, just like with the oud mood. I feel like the oud in here is even less noticeable. It has a cozy vibe to it and it's a smoky, woody oud. It has more of a woody scent to it than it does the oud. It's the wood that I'm getting smokiness from as well as the carnation. So it's just a nice blend of these notes that create this really beautiful composition. It's so well done, so well blended. And this is totally unisex. A man or a woman can wear this. I feel like it leans right straight down the middle. It doesn't smell feminine to me or it doesn't smell masculine. It's one of those fragrances that a man or a woman can wear. I put this in my husband and it smelled amazing on him. It smells different on him than it did on me. It's interesting how our skin pulls different notes. This is Cayette by La Tapa. This next fragrance is called Kaltat El Arabia and this is also from the house of La Tapa. The bottle looks like this. It's from their Royal Blends line. The top notes here are fruits and apple. Middle notes are spices, nutmeg and clove. Base notes are amber, woody notes, and musk. Essentially, this is a fresh, spicy, fruity, woody. It's ambery and it sits on a musky base. I have to say this one is not a love for me, maybe not even a strong like. This has a strong synthetic pineapple note in the opening. And unfortunately, that note never leaves. It's there for the entire duration of this fragrance. I am not feeling this one. It's not the kind of pineapple I usually like. For example, like Lamar by Kajal. It's a very realistic, juicy pineapple. 
this is not that it's very synthetic smelling and i'm not liking the combination that it creates with that apple note i don't even want to spray this one it's that synthetic screechiness that i just don't enjoy that I just can't get with. I've been playing with this one and trying it for a week now and I'm not loving this. I'm gonna end up decluttering it. This is Katat El Arabia by Latafa. I have another Latafa here. I should just call this a Latafa fragrance haul. This is called Shake El Shuk. I heard Adriana DC here on YouTube talk about this. She actually talked about a few of these fragrances. She also did a Middle Eastern fragrance haul. I also recall Veronica says talk about some of these as well as Kristen Perfume Nest. I will put all of these ladies' links down below. This is what the bottle looks like. I think it's stunning. Again, this looks so much more expensive than what it is, and the juice smells so much more expensive. Now, the notes on this one are gonna sound very similar to Oud Moon. At the top, there's rose, saffron, and cinnamon. Middle is caramel and patchouli. In the base, you get woody notes, vanilla, amber, abroxas. This is a warm, spicy, woody, balsamic, very sweet and resinous fragrance. This is pretty much identical to Oud Mood and Chagaf Oud. I have three in my collection which have the same scent profile. If you try Chagaf Oud and it's too much for you, too potent, Paula Bianca girl, I'm talking to you. I know you recently decluttered Chagaf Oud and I was like, oh, my heart was breaking. I think you will really enjoy this. It doesn't hit you in the face the way Chagaf Oud does. It's a lot milder. This is a much milder toned down version. The performance is still great on this. This lasts me eight plus hours. This is so much more subdued and it doesn't have any sharpness to it. This is one I'm going to spray on my skin. Mm. This is just so smooth. It's sweet. It's so beautiful. And again, this one is less rose heavy than Chaga Food. You smell this rose very faintly. It's there in the background, just supporting this whole composition. But this is a true gourmand. Like you get that caramel, you get the vanilla. Mm. Out of the three, I have to say that this is my favorite. If I had to just keep one, I would choose this one. Even over my baby Shaka food, yes, I would. I love this. I can totally overspray this. I can just go ham with this. It never gets too much. It's not headache inducing. It's not gonna choke you or others around you out. The projection is moderate. It doesn't project as much as Shanga Food. This is a friendlier, easier version to wear than Shanga Food. So if that one bothers you, I think you will fall in love with this one. Oh my gosh. Oh, like they perfected the formula in this one. They brought it up a notch and this is just perfection. I give this one 10 out of 10. It smells so delicious, so cozy. So sensual. And this is perfectly unisex. On me, I find it smells feminine. This is Shake El Shuk by Latafa. That completes my haul for today. Please let me know down in the comments below if you have tried any of these, what you think about them, if you're planning to purchase any of them. Love hearing from you as always. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back here soon. Take care.